Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world, but uh, in the Edmonton area, Alberta, it is afternoon, and uh, we are coming to you live from Sherwood Park, Alberta here, and uh, today we have a real special guest for you, and uh, there will even be possibly some uh, live music mixed in as well. So welcome, welcome to the Conversations with Dune and Friends, and uh, today we have uh, Jen Durant joining us. Jen is a professional musician and a music teacher and a community connector and all those wonderful things. Uh, I would like to maybe share a little bit uh, of her background with you before bringing her on camera here. Um, so Jen Durant, uh, she developed her love for music by way of uh, dance and figure skating at a very early stage in her life. And uh, learned that, you know, after hearing people play a dance, uh, that she took a real interest in the piano player, more so than even the uh, the, the dance instructor that was uh, uh, doing the work there. So so really early love for, for uh, piano. And so through her routine, she's been through uh, uh, many active school bands, the RCACAS, she'll talk a bit more about that, the marching band, uh, you know, school musical, and, and uh, she would sing at any event that she could, uh, right? And then later on, uh, moved to, um, went to Vancouver Island University, uh, Powell River, in the Powell River to uh, study voice, classical uh, realms, and, and those kinds of things. Uh, it was there that she developed a love for opera and, and art song and, and all those kinds of things. And later on, uh, study voice uh, in contemporary and, uh, and uh, various things at uh, McCune University. And during those years, she continued with her piano study and, and you know, took up the guitar and spending many years uh, playing uh, folk and, and roots and various original music and, and as well as cover. But uh, lots of different things. And uh, I want to maybe bring her on right now and uh, uh, you can tell us about the rest of your teaching as well then, uh, Jen. So uh, let me see here. Uh, we're going to uh, bring Jen on here right away. Jen, welcome. How are you this afternoon? I'm awesome. How are you doing, dude? Good, good, good. It's good to see you, good to hear you. And uh, uh, hopefully our voices are coming through loud and clear. The audience, if, if uh, there's any technical challenges, uh, please inform us, please give us feedback. But uh, welcome. Uh, now, I, I did not finish your introduction. Tell us more about the latter part in terms of teaching and uh, since 2008 you've been teaching and, and maybe expand on that if you could. Yeah, um, <laughs> I had started teaching in 2008 after getting a job at a music store where mm -hmm. it had a school attached to it. And I really fell in love with sharing the music with these young kids and, you know, it expanded much farther than young kids into I've been teaching people of all ages. So I moved out to Toefield and I realized there was a real need for music education in the rural community out here. So I set up shop and started teaching music lessons and now it's kind of taken over and it's become my full time um, my full-time job and my full-time interest and passion too. Wow, that's awesome. Toefield, Alberta, that's probably not too far from Sherwood Park, hey? It's not too far, no, it's about 35 minutes from Sherwood Park East mm -hmm. on Highway 14. All right, well, great. Uh, yeah. We'll we'll get back to some of the various things, but I know you, uh, you really have a strong belief that music is uh, something that uh, we all uh, need and, and can benefit from and, and uh, everybody's capable of doing music in, in a way that, that makes sense for them. Tell us a bit about your philosophy or feeling on that. Well, I've always been of the belief that music is for everyone and I have that kind of in the forefront on my homepage on my website. Um, I get a lot of questions from people um, saying, you know, is my child too old or am I too old or am I too young or am I, you know, mm -hmm. there's lots of, uh, there's a huge spectrum of people with disabilities of various um, capacities. So I just really feel that music is that one thing that can mm -hmm. jump over all of those bridges and, you know, bridge all those gaps that um, there's really not anyone I don't think on the planet that can't, um, have their life enriched by music in some way, whether it's mm -hmm. learning to do music or just enjoying it for the sound. 
Um, mm. It really is something that is very human and, you know, it's something that's inside us as human beings and sort of surpasses all of the, the little things that we have that divide us. Yes, absolutely. Music is very uh, universal and it unites, as uh, one might say. And uh, so thank you for being part of the music uh, community and, and in fact, uh, have chosen to go professional with your music uh, work and uh, full-time teacher and, and performer and, and uh, writer and all those kinds of things. Uh, I know today, uh, if it uh, works the way we plan, we're hoping to hear some live music from you in this program. So. Maybe just start telling us your uh, background, your history. How did you, how long have you been playing music? Uh, seems like forever, probably, right? It seems like forever. It really does mm -hmm. seem like forever. Um, yeah. I started on the piano when I was really young. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of mentioned there that I took a huge interest in the piano by way of ballet class. Mm -hmm. and so I definitely loved the piano and started that. And then I really started learning music in a real, uh, a, you know, a more traditional way in mm -hmm. grade six. And I started on the flute. A uh, flute. You know, <laughs> I, I did clarinet and I even did oboe some, uh, you know, one point in band when, uh, you know, oboe is very hard to come by in terms of oboe players. So, so when the oboe player was uh, sick, sometimes I was, uh, you know, sitting in just, just to kind of, but uh, yeah, so flute. Now, in terms of music, uh, what kind of music do you uh, typically do? Uh, we're going to show some clips here of your music, but uh, maybe describe to the audience the kind of music that you tend to uh, gravitate towards. Well, for my own personal practice, it's um, there's quite a, quite a variety of music going on in my house on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. um, actively still I'm singing classical music um, yes. sort of within the realms of you know um, my local performances and especially within the church at, that I have my mm -hmm. little choir stuff mm -hmm. um, but I also um, I'm doing a lot of country and I've play guitar so I do a lot of acoustic stuff and um, um, there's a huge variety but you know, on any given day, if you walked by my house, you would very likely hear blues coming out of the basement, or you might hear me singing hymns, or you might hear me no, singing yeah. some art, classical stuff. Very eclectic. I really love everything. I really, really do. So yeah, I try not well, to pigeonhole myself too much <laughs> or at right, all. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's wonderful. Very uh, versatile that way. I know you have, uh, based on your opera interest and, and background and experience with that you you have a very broad spectrum uh, range to your uh, vocal range and whatnot and and uh, we're going to experience some of that here uh, our lucky audience is going to hear some wonderful a cappella work as well as uh, even some of the recordings that, that you have shared with me uh, but but uh, before we share some of those recordings and before we get to, to you singing uh, uh, a song or a part of a song. Um, tell us more about the, the, the teaching that you do. When you teach, uh, is it just younger kids or is it all ages or what's your um, customer mix? Well, um, my youngest student right now is five and mm -hmm. uh, my oldest student is 83. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's a pretty big difference, but I would say the average, um, most kids are, are taking lessons you know, around grade three to eight. Mm -hmm. um, there tends to be, uh, high school students tend to be very busy and private lessons might fall off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then um, lots of university students and even, you know, people who are at a point in their life, in their adult life where they have time mm -hmm. and an to take up an instrument and, you know, mm -hmm. um, everybody has a musical journey and I'm kind of just really open to, supporting people wherever they are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so so what's the typical kind of arrangement for your students music students is it uh, every week uh, a few times a week or what's the typical kind of uh, arrangement the very typical arrangement is half an hour once mm -hmm. a week mm -hmm. uh, especially when you're starting out for voice lessons i prefer 45 minutes mm -hmm. because there's a lot to get through in terms of actually warming up your body 
all mm-hmm. instruments need to be warmed up, but the human <laughs> the human voice takes a little extra work to get prepared to sing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do find I tend to take the voice lessons. I have a hard time keeping it to a half hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so usually half- once a week or an hour, depending on you know yeah. attention span and and uh, uh, what level you're at. Yeah, I know you uh, are well into the remote teaching and all of that. Uh, all this uh, COVID and, and uh, isolation certainly hasn't stopped you from doing the work that you do. Tell us about how that plays out in this uh, sort of uh, remote teaching. How is that working for you so far? So far, it's going great. I was completely surprised how many people were open to doing the online lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a little bit of a shock at first. I was uh, not something I was used to doing <laughs> at all. And being in front of a screen and talking to people in this way was a little strange at mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. Um, the technology was a learning curve. Um, most programs do have a bit of a sound delay. Mm-hmm. I think it would be different in teaching another discipline might not be an issue, but in teaching music, we do have the sound sound delay. So when I'm accompanying um, or strumming along or playing the piano uh, along with the singer, it's very difficult. So it's it's a definitely been a lesson in being prepared because mm-hmm. it's important that the students have their materials beforehand, that I have the books that they're using so I can see mm-hmm. I'm not able to look over their shoulder at their music. So mm-hmm. um, it's yeah. come with challenges, but I I'm so happy with how it's going. Mm-hmm. A huge benefit that I found out of this is yeah. ear training. Oh, really? Um, yeah, ear training is actually, we've been doing more of it than ever, and it's been really fun because it's, uh, you know, teaching by rote and by ear is mm-hmm. sort of, in my opinion, has kind of gone by the wayside a little bit mm-hmm. in a lot of teaching methods. That's not, you know, a mm-hmm. strong thing anymore. So going back to, you know, hear what it sounds like, repeat after me, hear what it sounds like. There's a lot of ear training going on. So this is really great for them. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I didn't realize how much I didn't focus on that. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, kind of like when, when you were, let's say you, you, uh, we, I have a friend that uh, you might know him, Colin McDonald. Uh, do you, does that name ring a bell? So, so mm-hmm. he, yeah, he is blind and he's a great musician and, and great guitar player and, uh, and singer and uh, in several bands. And, and uh, you can just imagine a person who can't see is going to, you know, kind of crank up some other senses uh, to kind of uh, cover. Right. So. So, uh, yeah, very interesting. Quick question for you. So um, uh, do you mind sharing what kind of software or tool you tend to use for these uh, kind of remote lessons? Um, sometimes they're on Zoom, but mm-hmm. t- totally honest, I've been having great success with Facebook Messenger video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Great. It's a tool that almost everyone has. You yeah. don't, many parents have it on their phones and tablets, so yeah. you're not yeah. having to use the home computer yeah. and they can be around the house. So it's actually great. And as long Absolutely. as you have it's free so <laughs> absolutely it, you know what it, it's um they have just improved it about a week ago did you hear about that facebook no. uh, messenger has been improved significantly uh, i guess they're trying to kind of go after zoom a little bit and then uh, kind of but but they have, have actually facebook messenger free you can actually have several people on a a, a conference video call uh, it's all free did you know that yeah this is so, this is new. Look, look, yeah, look it up. Yeah, so so you you're already on that trendy path of uh, you know Facebook Messenger because they have expanded it about a week and a half ago. Oh, perfect! I was just ahead of my time. <laughs> there you go. Everybody will be all over it, and uh, I think Zoom is going to have to work harder to to kind of make sure that they they maintain their spot there. But uh, yeah, you know, Facebook. I, I think they probably have some money to throw at it, and they've been throwing at well, it for a long. Certainly, and <laughs> no. It, it's something that I'm just finding it's you don't have to download any extra softwares or anything like that. And and mm-hmm. kids can easily use it. There's a there's a sub messenger that parents can have on their account for their kids mm-hmm. called Facebook Messenger Kids. Yeah. And so they have their own little messenger account nice. that's actually to the parents account. So nice. they 
they can actually call me and do the video chat all by themselves. Mm. So it's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Um, you know, I think uh, it might be a good time for me to show one of the clips. Uh, do you have a preference which clip you want me to show? Uh, shall we start with uh, either Amazing Grace or Waylon, uh, is it Wayfaring Stranger? Which one would you like to go with? You know what? It's your show. You decide, you decide what you're going to do. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to uh, go ahead and share. In this case, I'm actually going to share uh, really essentially. Um, okay, I'm going to share the screen. And um, here we go. Um, and I'm going to, sh I think uh, we can go with that. And. Uh, Tell me if you can hear it when I play it, okay? Uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, get rid of the... Can you hear it? Can you hear it? I can hear it. I can hear it. <laughs> Begun. 
that say a wretch like me I was lost oh but now I'm found I was blind oh but now Awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. Tell us about that song when you uh, recorded it and, and tell us a bit more. So I recorded that song a few months ago in the fall at Danlin Studios in Sherwood Park. Mm -hmm. That's, um, Dan Sinisak's place over there. Yeah. And um, that particular, I'm, I'm working on a full length album over there, but that particular track had was just a off the floor oh, really? kind of yeah sort of a live I wanted one song on there that was just a very basic um, mm -hmm. Amazing Grace has always been my favorite hymn and mm -hmm. you know from a very early age I've been singing that song and I'm trying to find mm -hmm. my own expression of it. Yeah, Dan Lin Studio. They're, they're practically my neighbors here. I don't know if you know, but uh, so Dan, Lin, you know, Dan and Connie are just awesome, awesome folks in every way. And of course, their studio is fantastic, world class there, um, in right here in Sherwood Park. And you see that message? I don't know if you see this little um, um, kind of comment from Shane, Shane Painter. Uh, he's an awesome, fantastic uh, uh, sound engineer in the Edmonton area, musician as well. You, you see him with his photo with the double bass there. So uh, yeah, where is back? And thank you, Shane. That's a that's a very nice comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can read the comment there on screen. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah, and then I don't know if you know David. He's also in Sherwood Park. David said, great singing, what a range. Absolutely, what a range is uh, is uh, very true. So- um, oh, wow. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So tell us more. Um, so that's, that's one type of song. I know we have a clip of you singing, a video clip of you singing, you know, uh, more an opera kind of a sound at, uh, was it at McEwen kind of university conservatory? I, I guess that, that clip. Yeah. That's at the hall there down, yeah. down at floor level. Yeah. Um, so I've been, I was studying for several years and um, I don't know, Ron Long, if you're listening to this or not, but I'm hoping to get back to my studies with Ron very shortly mm -hmm. here. Um, yeah, I was studying with Ron Long for several years at, the conservatory at McEwen there. Mm -hmm. And the that was a clip from one of the the yearly student recitals that we do for all of the conservatory students. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to some of those. I've been to some of those uh, recitals right in that location there. So I I, I recall that, but uh, so tell us more in terms of uh, your music. Uh, you, uh, you, you're you getting ready to release an album soon, right? Or, or is... Well, I'm hoping it'll be, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long journey um, because yeah. I'm funding this album 100% by myself. Mm -hmm. And so um, thankfully, like you said, Dan and Connie are the most wonderful people in the world and yeah, they're absolutely. sort of allowing me to you know, mm -hmm. go in pieces here with this project. Mm -hmm. So we've gone into the studio. We've had sort of three times now where we've done a few sessions and then taken a big long break and then done a few sessions and taken a big long break. So nice. Um, that last recording was from our most recent one. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm hoping it's going to come out. You know, I was hoping for the fall, this fall. Uh, how many songs, if you don't mind sharing, are you uh, packaging together there? Ten songs. Ten songs, wonderful. And uh, yeah. do, do you have a uh, a theme or a title or, or of the CD or that you want or the uh, album that you want to share or, or is that top secret yet? 
No, no, there's no, there's no secret. <laughs> I mean, I'm uh, um, more than happy to share. It's uh, going to be called sacred. Mm-hmm. Um, the the meaning behind that is, you know, and in one of the pamphlets from one of my concerts, mm-hmm. um, it says there in in music we consider sacred to be any music of faith. Mm-hmm. So music, worship music, um, mm-hmm. you know, anything, any music that pertains to the, the church or any kind of faith, actually, of any mm-hmm. kind. Um, so in normal life, <laughs> not that music isn't normal life, but in, in the rest of the world, sacred is just the word we use to describe something very valuable and important to us, very meaningful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, mean, I post that because I'm kind of writing both of those meanings in this album. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Great. So any sort of estimate of uh, are we going to see the album in 2020, you think? I really hope so. I'm really hoping it'll be this fall. Um, All right. Yeah. Great. Well, well, wonderful. Well, best wishes with that. And like I said, we keep underscoring Dan Lynn Studio and, and Dan and uh, Connie are awesome, awesome people in, in every oh, which way. I can't, yeah. say enough. I can't say enough about their hospitality, the kindness of their hearts. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's no way I could even describe the amazingness of the studio itself. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the gear, yeah. <laughs> and I've had uh, Miles Wilkinson engineering this for me, and he's just amazing to have there with us too. So, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. it's been such a wonderful experience, and I mean, there's a lot of great recording facilities in Edmonton, but um, yeah. you know, it's they're just so personable, and it's yeah. it's like it's like recording in your own house. It's so comfortable and and nice. relaxed. So, yes. Um, just a, a note for our viewers who might uh, who listen to that recording there. The software that I'm using to broadcast this on top of Facebook Live does uh, kind of change the sound a bit. So if it sound not quite realistic, uh, that would be B Live software. They're trying to improve that in the next few weeks, but until then, uh, full range music uh, is not a hundred percent, you know, kind of perfect coming through. Um, the whole system there. So, so just uh, be aware of that. But it's, uh, it's passable. You know, you can certainly hear the music. But uh, so tell us more in terms of your um, musical journey and, and your other sort of uh, what's your thoughts on this COVID thing? Is it all, all bad? Is there some silver lining? Uh, let's hear from you on this COVID as a entrepreneur who is, you know, working uh, at home and, and uh, kind of making a living at, at this thing. Uh, give us a perspective on COVID. Well, obviously, it's unfortunate. It's the, you know, it's terrible to think of people being sick and to think of people, especially people dying. I mean, so mm-hmm. the whole, like, just to start off, the whole COVID thing is awful. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I am, I'm just a bright side looker in general. I try mm-hmm. to always see how we can make the best of a bad situation. So I've, I've tried to be really positive through it and be supportive of my students who are, you know, I've had a real mix of people who are not comfortable with the video lessons, but they still want sort of that email support and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. um, just trying to really be supportive of my students as they go through this too. Mm-hmm. And, um, but from a business perspective, it, it hit pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Um, there's thankfully um, I think there's, you know, the, the powers that be are trying to provide supports for people who are really struggling. Mm-hmm. So I encourage all business owners and small business owners, musicians, artists to try to look as hard as you can, try to find support if you need it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been really successful with the video lessons. I'm keeping very busy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's at first I was a little bit uncomfortable with the the camera and the technology and stuff, but I've embraced it and I'm, I'm just going with it. And that's wonderful. I really miss the human contact of my students. Um, a lot of them are saying to me at the end of the video, I wish I could give you a hug. <laughs> and so that's hard. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm just so eagerly awaiting the day when I can open my studio door and have them come all, all come back. Um, yeah. But I think you're right. You said earlier on um, that you might we might see a blending of y- still continuing to use this technology. Um, mm-hmm. 
this has brought out so many great ideas as far as teaching um, out here in rural Alberta. Uh, it's very hard to get to lessons if we have a big snowstorm. Mm -hmm. uh, things like that. I'm starting to discover that maybe learning how to do it this way, we can overcome challenges as they come up in different ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you are uh, keeping an eye out for that. Uh, so that, that's great. Uh, uh, I'm going to show the next clip here of you just featuring your, your vocals only on, on video. So I'm going to take both of our videos off just momentarily just so that I can feature that. And uh, so I'll be right back here. And so All right, I'm going to start the video and I'm going to be off camera here completely so that you can uh, see the video in larger kind of thing here. So let's just kind of play that here.
Oh, that was fantastic. I was muted there while I was listening to it. So the sound came through okay for you there, Jen? Yeah, I could hear it. I could definitely hear it. <laughs> it was oh. great. All right. Well, thanks. Thank you for sharing those uh, clips there. I, I know that we're going to have you um, sing one of your selection here soon uh, live. So if the audience is uh, uh, looking to hear a, a live performance of a, a piece uh, hanging around uh, and uh, tell us more, though, in terms of um, about that, you said that was a recital that you did as part of your um, study, I guess. Right. Yeah, um, I always you know, it's important to me, especially as a music teacher, um, to keep up with my own studies as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I try very hard to always keep myself in some kind of way uh, learning and growing. So mm -hmm. um, I continue to study voice and um, classical voice mostly with Ron Long over there at the conservatory. And, mm -hmm. you know, we... We're always working on something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, tell us, uh, in terms of uh, the audience out there who are thinking about music uh, lessons for their kids or, or themselves or whoever, uh, what do you want to tell them about that whole um, music lessons in, in these days? Uh, anything to share that uh, might encourage somebody who might be on the fence about taking music lessons? Well, Especially in these strange times, I could see how the decision of do we sign up for lessons, do we sign our child up for lessons, you know, even yourself. Um, for some senior citizens, the, the idea of doing something with like video and, and all that is a little bit freaky. So mm -hmm. to make the decision to, to, to do video lessons, you have to decide, are you OK with the technology? Are you OK? Um, do it with a little bit of a delay where, you know, we have to kind of slow the conversation down. I'm going to sing this to you. You sing it back to me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, to take music lessons in general, mm -hmm. most music teachers are of the mind that they want you to want to be there. So, you know, it, I think it's a great idea to call up a music school in your area or call me <laughs> mm -hmm. if you're in the Tofield area and, um, you know, sign up for a couple of lessons. It never has to be a lifelong commitment. Um, mm -hmm. It's no harm to bring your kids, get them to try it out. Mm -hmm. Some of the bigger centers have rental options for instruments. That's often a, a question I get a lot. Do I need a guitar? Do I need to own a piano? Do I need to own mm -hmm. an instrument? Um, mm -hmm. And no, you yeah. totally don't. Um, yeah. I have quite a few lender instruments that I lend out and I have... Um, I know L and M and lots of the big places have great rental prices mm -hmm. and facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wonder if you are uh, ready to uh, to delight us with a live rendition of uh, maybe even a surprise to me because uh, we haven't even discussed what you might be singing. But uh, are you ready to go? Yeah. I think so. I mean. Okay. Yeah, I, I always love to yeah, sing. Wonderful. Well, so imagine the audience out there is just cheering for you. They've seen you before. They've heard you before. They saw the audio clip. They saw the video clip. And now for the big event of live over some technology <laughs> that uh, we hope will uh, hold up while we do this. But I'm going to be just uh, in the corner here watching and cheering you on. So take us uh, through that song. Uh, any introduction that you like to kind of provide is, is awesome. Sure. Okay, so I, I'm going to sing a song that is, uh, I thought it would be a great choice for singing a cappella. Um, I often sing the song a cappella anyway. Um, it's one of my favorite hymns, and it's a very old gospel spiritual. I've heard uh, many renditions of this, and it also is going to be on my album mm -hmm. featuring members of the Ardrossan United Church Choir. So mm -hmm. um, it's called over my head <laughs> here we go over my head i hear music in the air over my head i hear music in the Over my head, I 
I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. When the storms of life are raging, I hear music in the air. When the storms of life are raging, I hear music in the air. When the storms of life are raging, I hear music in the air. Well, there must be a God somewhere over my head. I hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. There be a God somewhere. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, as we around the uh, corner here to kind of uh, towards the end of the conversation here in the time that uh, we have booked, uh, Hopefully you uh, have some flexibility. Uh, you don't have a, uh, a music session right at one, uh, do you? No, not, a right, not right at one o'clock. Okay, I just want to be mindful because if you do, uh, we'll cut it well before then. But uh, if you, since you don't have a, a, a other commitment here, if you uh, want to take us a little bit further beyond the, a lot of time, uh, you're welcome to. Uh, so tell us, uh, you know, when you uh, thought about coming on to the conversation here, were there aspects that you want to share with our audience that um, we haven't uh, done so? Anything else? I know you have a, a video that uh, might be fun to show that video as well, if, if it makes sense, uh, where you were hosting a jam, I guess, right? So you're a host at some of the jams as well. Uh, which one was it? Is it um, Overtime, right? In it Sherwood Park. Overtime. Yeah. 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 So I, I've seen I've seen you in that environment. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, actually where we met, Dune. <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually, um, if you remember, we actually met a little bit uh, earlier than that when you were at uh, working at the musical instrument store, you might recall. Uh, do you recall uh, the work uh, at that store by uh, Baseline and, and uh, Sherwood Park there at Baseline, just at the end of that cycle there? That's where we first yeah, met briefly. And then, and then uh, you know, the uh, overtime was the time where we were able to chat a bit more. Definitely. Yes, and I remember you from Triumph Music as well. Yep. Yes, yes. So. so so your choice, um, if you'd like me to show that video, I can queue it up. But if you have something else that you want to uh, discuss uh, instead or, or in addition, feel free. So anything top of mind that you want to share with our audience? Well, I just uh, I wanted to tell you thank you for one thing. And I honestly um, have been enjoying the interviews. I've been watching them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really great to hear from some of these people that I see them every day on Facebook, but it's nice to get a little chance to dive in a little deeper into who they are. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I've seen such uh, unity in the music community. There always has been. I mean, the music community in Edmonton is fantastic. Just the, the players uh, are like a family, all the different mm -hmm. jam and open mics and live venues and sound people and all the different people I know from the music community in Edmonton. It's like a big family. And with this COVID thing, um, it's been incredible watching these live performances and fundraisers and different things to bring musicians together and say, you know, like, 
the music isn't canceled. We can't gather together. And as musicians, our whole lives revolve around people being together and big groups of people. And um, whether it's you're in a four piece band and you can't get together with your band members or you're doing big corporate events and you can't do those anymore, or you're a rock star and you can't fill your stadiums <laughs> anymore. Um, it's, it's, it's been a big change for all of us and mm -hmm. the positivity and unity that I've seen in the music community is just very heartwarming. I'm yeah. very proud to be a part of it in a small way, even from out here in Toefield. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank everyone in the music community and in the entertainment and event community because um, I know it's been hard. I know. And it's been, and all for the music teaching community too. It's mm -hmm. been rough. And um, uh, If any music teachers out there um, want to get together and talk about things that have worked for them or ask me about what's working for me, I'm totally available on my Facebook page and all my social medias and email, whatever mm -hmm. you want. So, yeah, hey, I, I just found this uh, post that you uh, post from memories from uh, when we met over at uh, Overtime there. I just wanted to yeah, flash it up. So this is a, a, a sort of your jam host uh, scene here you've got all of your equipment there your mixer and uh, smiling at uh now is that looking at the performer or at least looking at the uh, audience on the side here it was a very um unique setup wasn't it there <laughs> with the it stage was a and really, really interesting setup they had it over time the the bar was actually around the front of the stage and the sound booth that you can see me in there was towards the back of the venue so it was um in that picture, I'm actually looking sideways out to out into the bar, kind of, and the the performers would have been way out, more out in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, but they had amazing sound system in there. I mean, it was it was a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. They had, it was a really interesting setup, and um, you know, I heard lots of mixed reviews on on the on the setup some people really enjoyed it i enjoyed using it i had a great time um i always enjoyed the sound in that place i thought it was pretty good um, uh -huh. i loved singing yeah. in there too. yeah yeah you know i i do have a uh, a clip uh are you good for time can we hang on a little bit longer i like to show this clip if, if you're a game yeah sure <laughs> So as we kind of wrap up here, Jen, uh, any sort of final thoughts to share with uh, the folks out there uh, with respect to uh, whether it's music, whether it's community, whether it's uh, coping with uh, the strange times that we're in? But yeah, no, I, um, I think, you know, my belief is just that music is something that, uh, you know, we talked about this at the beginning, that it's something that can enrich your life in in some way or another no matter who you are so um i'm so thankful music is a very big part of my life but i mean even for people who just hearing a song on the radio can sometimes brighten your day you know mm -hmm. so um you know i just i would encourage everybody to find a way to allow music into your world and whether it's learning music or enjoying it or playing it or or whatever you do um it can really make make things better, um, and I just so much love to all the all the members of the Edmonton community and also the world music community because mm -hmm. artists all over the world have really stepped up and banded together, and um, that's what music does. Mm -hmm. It just rises above everything else. So, 
All right. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank you for uh, taking the time to join us here on this uh, fine afternoon. It's nice and sunny. Uh, I'm sure out in Toe Field, it's uh, uh, an afternoon that you could very much enjoy walking outside for your lunch break. And uh, appreciate that you took the time to join us with this. And uh, thank you so much, Jen. Okay. Yeah. Um, my website is, it's my music staff. It's I'm just trying to, it's Miss Jen, so M-I-S-S-J-E-N-N dot mymusicstaff.com. Wonderful. So thank you for that. And uh, the place that you probably spend more time on is the uh, the Facebook page, uh, Facebook page uh, called uh, Jennifer Durant uh, Music. And uh, yes. so, uh, yeah, thank you so much again uh, for taking the time to uh, join us and uh, have a wonderful uh, rest of your day, Jen. Thanks. You too, Dune. It was great talking to you. And I hope to you talk bet. to you again soon. You bet. Thanks. Thanks. Stay Bye. Bye. Well, I apologize for that um, technical difficulty there with the, the delayed sound there uh, at the end. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll improve here as, uh, as I continue to uh, uh, kind of uh, get used to this, everything here that's uh, all the flying kind of components, all the moving component, moving parts. But uh, thank you again for joining us on this uh, rendition of the uh, Conversations with Dune and Friends. And uh, in this particular uh, episode, we have uh, Jen Durant joining us from Tofield, Alberta. Have a great rest of your day and uh, take care of yourself and take care of one another. And uh, till we see you again. Thanks.